So thanks again, Danielle, for organizing today's session and also to Sage for hosting it and for everyone who's attending. So I know that there's a range of attendees in the audience today from perhaps masters and PhD students to even postdoc researchers. So I hope the content's gonna be useful to you, but we're gonna make plenty of time at the end for questions and we can always do some follow-up um, with individuals after the session. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can extract and assimilate information from scholarly literature in a more systematic way and how you can critically analyse it by identifying aspects such as how the author positions their work in relation to previous studies, what the key findings of any cited studies are and other indicators of the quality of the research. So with published research continuing to grow really at an unprecedented rate today and a big increase in preprint servers, there's challenges not only at the discovery stage, but later when you need to read, filter and assimilate the research that you've saved. And studies, plenty of studies have shown that researchers and students are overwhelmed with the volume of reading and that actually scientific papers are getting harder to read. And because of this, screening the literature to identify key information is really becoming a lot more difficult. And whether you're writing a literature review, a thesis or your own paper, you'll need to screen, analyse and interpret large collections of research. And that brings with it a number of challenges. So the first is a mere fact of having to screen and read hundreds of articles to identify key information such as the study data, cited work and limitations to determine how useful a paper is going to be to your research. Then there's the issue of saving and organising all of those articles and then later being able to retrieve specific information from an extensive library of papers that you could have built up over months or even years. There's the challenge of expanding your library with related articles and cited materials in an efficient and systematic way. And then last but not least, there's the small matter of managing the cognitive load, not only of reading and retaining hundreds of articles, but also of inferring connections, similarities and discrepancies between them. So for every article you read, you ideally need to be answering the following questions to determine the quality and significance of the research. So the why, what's the problem being addressed and what's the objective of the study or the research? The who, so identifying study participants and depending on the type of the study, is the number sufficient to provide meaningful results? The how, so are the methods used standard? Are they based on established work? Or perhaps does a study take a new approach? The what, so what are the results? Are they meaningful and what can we learn from them? Limitations, so what could be improved to make the results more reliable? And then comparative analysis, so how do the results fit with or differ from what was previously known about the subject? But answering all of those questions in a methodical way whilst you skim reading a pile of papers returned by a literature search is really hard. So the first challenge is that you have to identify very specific information within the full text of the article. And if the paper follows a structure, then identifying the methods or significant findings can be relatively easy just by scanning the corresponding section of that paper or by reading the abstract. But when it comes to, term to determining aspects such as whether the methods used have been replicated from earlier studies or they're novel, what the limitations of the study are and how they could be improved, and how reliable the study data is, this type of information is much harder to pick up when just skim reading an article. So when it comes to appraising whole collections of articles to identify gaps in the literature and verify assumptions and contributions, what's the advice out there? Well, there's lots of useful guides on how to read a paper, but they tend to focus on what to do rather than how you actually do it. 
Interestingly, some recommend not reading the abstract, as this can provide a biased interpretation of the paper, given that the author will often write the abstract to show the paper in the best light. Others recommend reading the introduction and the background first to identify what the main problem is that the researchers are trying to solve, any prior work on the subject and its possible limitations. But there's lots of other useful ways that you can evaluate a piece of research. And they include verifying the sources cited in the paper and following the citation trail looking at methods in more detail, so looking more closely at what was done and with whom, comparing the results to previous work in the field, so how does the paper sit within the wider body of research, previewing material by identifying key concepts in the text and cross-referencing technical terms, identifying some of the low-hanging fruits such as study data, figures and tables, and also breaking the full text into more manageable sections to interact with it in a non-linear way or organizing the material in a more visual way. But if you're attempting to do this for every article you read, how do you capture the relevant information so that it's still gonna be meaningful long after you've finished reading the paper? And what about if you need to compare methods, results and findings from 50 or even 100 papers so this is usually done by people skim reading the full text and making notes, but notes and highlights are notoriously difficult to synthesize into a literature matrix. So I'm going to jump into a demo to show you how Scholarcy can be used to extract and assimilate information from research papers and help you to critically analyze them. And for those of you who are less familiar with Scholarcy, it's a web app and it breaks down papers and book chapters into interactive summary flashcards and helps with non-linear exploration of a text that we're going to be looking at. So Scholarcy is definitely a post-discovery tool and it surfaces the information that you might miss from skim reading the papers and helps you jump straight to the sections that you want to know more about. And it's used by students and researchers, not only to screen papers, but also to prepare literature reviews. So I'm just going to share my Scholarcy library. And Danielle, can you just let me know you can see my library there? I can. Great. So what you see here is my library homepage. Uh, within Scholarcy, and I'm just going to minimize these. Um, and you can see here that I've got a number of, I've created a number of different libraries um, under various subject headings, and within those libraries I've got a number of folders, and I have many <laughs> uh, saved summary flashcards that I've generated by importing papers into my library. And so there's, there's quite a few different ways that you can import papers into Scholarcy. So I'm just going to show you a few of those now. So the first way is just to paste the URL of an open access article or, or any web article, and it will pull that article in and generate a summary flashcard. You can also upload papers or even collections of papers um, from either Google Drive or Dropbox. Um, we have a drag and drop upload, so you could drag a PDF of a paper or a Word document from your desktop, or you can browse and select from your local files. And then you can also paste up to 5,000 characters of text and generate a summary flashcard that way. But the other thing is that you're able to um, import a wide range of formats into Scholarcy. So not only could you import, say, a Word document of a manuscript, for example, um, a PDF, the HTML text of an article, even a PowerPoint. You can also import collections of articles via RIS and BibTeX files. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So the Subject of my research today is the impact of music therapy on adults with dementia. 
And I've done a couple of searches, so one on PubMed and one on Google Scholar. And um, it really doesn't matter what the discovery service is that you're using, um, so long as you can export those search results to either a RIS or a BibTeX file, then you can import them into ScholarC. So I exported my PubMed results, and you can see that I've got my reference list here. And I'm just going to go back into my library and into the music therapy folder that I've set up. And all I need to do within this folder to pull all of the papers from that PubMed search in is click on this import button. And then I can just browse and upload that file. So I'm not going to do that today because there's quite a few articles in there. And so just to save on time, I've already imported that RIS file into my library. But one other useful way of pulling in search results into ScholarC, and it's, it's a more automated way, is to set up an RSS feed. So again, it really doesn't matter what the discovery service is, as long as it um, enables RSS feeds, then you can pull those into your Scholarcy library. And so I'm just gonna show you that within PubMed. So here I get to create an RSS link, and then I can just copy that. And then I've created a new folder here within my music therapy library. And I just hit the RSS button, paste the URL, and then hit subscribe. And I actually set this up a few days ago, and you can see that Scholarcy's pulled in, I think it's 512 articles related to that PubMed search. So basically, Scholarcy's just continually pulling in any related articles and updating your folder or your library with the, the latest articles relating to that search term. So that, that can be a handy way of just quickly pulling in articles and then you, know, you can quickly screen these and determine which are gonna be most useful to your own work. So I'm just going back into this main music therapy folder and here are the, the 20 articles that I pulled in from my RIS file. And so as an initial screen, what I can do here is just, you know, get the, um, the name of the author, the title of the publication. I can look at the number of times these papers have been cited if I want and look at the year of publication. But then I also get this headline summary, which is generated by Scholarcy. And that's just gonna give me a very quick insight into what the paper's about. So it might be a piece of, a key methodology, it could be a key finding, but it's just going to give you a flavour of, of what the article's about. And so I'm going to open up the first of my summary flashcards from the articles that I've imported. And this is the standard flashcard format that you'll see within Scholarcy. So we're going to expand some of these sections. But if I go back to thinking about screening the literature in a more methodical and systematic way, there's a few things I can do just to pick up, quickly pick up some information about the research. So I get a link back to the full text of the article. And then again, I get this headline summary. So this is telling me that the, the authors were managing, oh, sorry, examining the relationship of changes in biomarkers. Um, to improvements in cognitive function uh, with the intervention of med meditation and music listening. So that's giving me a sense of a general sense of what the paper's about. And then what I would probably do first is to expand this key concept section. So here Scholarcy's identified some of the most significant terms or key concepts from within the paper. And, you know, if I'm an expert in the subject, I'm likely to be familiar with a lot of these. If I'm not, then I can click on these to get definitions of those terms. But it's also possible when I'm screening the literature that I might pick up on a particular keyword. So telomerase, for example, that I hadn't seen in the title of the paper and I hadn't seen in the abstract, but it's important to my research. So that's going to make me think, well, actually, this could, be, this could be quite useful to me and I might want to look at this in more depth. 
And then I'm going to expand the scholarly highlights. So again, thinking about screening the article quite quickly, thinking about having a lot of articles to process. I'm going to get the top five or six key points from the article in this section. And this could be a combination of some statements of fact or evidence based facts, um, some perhaps some details of the study participants and maybe some key findings. And you can see it's just five or six quick bullet points. I also get links to definitions of key terms. And in this case, I get a link to um, the, the table from within the paper so I can export that to Excel. So you can kind of think of scholarly highlights a bit like the abstract. However, it's probably gonna give you a, a broader representation of the paper. So it's the, the, the points that you see here will be taken from across the entire paper. So it's gonna give you a slightly different view to what you would get from the abstract. And then I might think this is this is quite useful. I want to have a closer look at the introduction and perhaps you know the methodology. So thinking about that nonlinear exploration of the text, I can expand any one of these sections. And here you can see I've got a snippet of the introduction. So I think it's the first couple of sentences of the introduction. And that might, might be enough. Um, but if I want to see more, then I can expand that. And you'll see here that I'm starting to see some of these blue highlights. So we have a unique application called a robo highlighter. And what that's doing is essentially what you would do when you're going through literature and highlighting important points. Um, and so anything highlighted in blue is, is, a, is a fact, sort of a fact-based um, statement. Um, or an evidence-based statement, and anything in orange is a key finding or a contribution from the author. So again, if, if I was to expand the results, but I didn't want to read all of them in one go, these highlights can be quite useful for screening. And we've recently made these highlights interactive. So if I click on the contributions for this paper, I can see that there's there's four contributions pulled out by Scholarcy. And if I just click on one of those, that's gonna take me to the, the corresponding contribution, but in within the full text. So it's really giving me the context of where that contribution sits within the paper um, and, you know, and the, the wider information around it. So this particular contribution is in the results section. And I can do the same for important points. So there's a lot more of those in this particular paper. But again, I can just click on any one of these and this is telling me that this particular points in the introduction and then I can read on if that's of interest. So there are just some ways that you can use the summary flashcard to, to screen the literature. Um, and to screen it quite quickly and to surface information that you might miss from skim reading the full text. But now you, want, you might want to go a little bit deeper, but still without necessarily, you know, launching straight into the full text of the article if you've got a lot of papers to get through. So there's quite a few um, elements to scholarly that help you start to analyse the paper more. Um, the first one of those is this comparative analysis section. So what this is doing is telling me where the paper or how the paper sits within the wider body of the research. So it's telling me whether the paper's confirming findings from earlier research studies, if it's building on earlier research studies and the section of the paper that it's doing that in and perhaps if it's differing from earlier studies and how it's differing. So this can be quite useful just to get some more context. And you'll see we've got the highlights here again for each of these sections. I'm just gonna select this section, which is building on some prior research. And so the author's telling me the research that it's actually confirming or building on. And I can also check the citation that it's referring to. 
So if I want to validate that citation or look at it in more detail, then I can do that. So I get the name of that cited paper. And then there's a few things I can do here. If I want to find out a little bit more about the cited paper, but I don't want to um, click, click on that link and go straight to the cited source and read the full text, then I can click the Scholarly Findings button here. And this is going to just give me a few key highlights from this particular paper. So there you go. Yeah, so what that's done is it's gone away, found the paper and pulled in some of the key highlights that I showed you in the tab earlier for that cited paper. So it's giving me a little bit more background to that paper, perhaps some information about the programme, the study participants and some of the findings. And I can also click on this Cite AI button here to get some more citation context. So this is telling me that this cited paper uh, has in fact been cited 73 times, uh, but also I get a bit more sentiment analysis. So it's telling me it's been positively cited five times and questioned twice. So again, this is all giving me deeper insight into the paper, but also the papers that it's citing. And I'm just going to look at this section here. So this is also in agreement with findings from a prior study. And this time I might want to actually click on the full, click on the, the link and, and go to the full text of this paper to see it in more detail. So I'm just going to click on that link and open up the full text. So this is an open access article and I've got access to the full text. And I may think, well, this is going to be useful to my literature review or, or my thesis and I want to hang on to it. And so there's a really quick way of just importing that article, that cited article straight into my library. So I'm just going to click on my Scholarly Chrome extension here. And that's going to generate a summary flashcard similar to what you you see in Scholarly Library, but this was is in within the browser. This can take a couple of seconds, just depending on the length of the the article. So you can see that that I've got that same summary flashcard format, and I can simply save that to my Scholarly Library and pull it into my Music Therapy folder. So this is quite a useful way of citation chaining. And then thinking about analysing the paper further, I can look at perhaps the limitations. So I can see that straight away there are some limitations to this particular study. Um, one of those being the sample size is relatively small and also the participants were relatively young and well educated, which could have impacted the results. And then I might want to just see what the author recommends in terms of additional research or any future work that might be needed in this field. And then another useful aspect for literature reviews and also citation snowballing is the fact that all of the references are surfaced in this references section and each of them has a link to the, the full text of the paper. So if the article's open access, then you're going to be able to link straight to that. If you have a subscription to that particular journal, you'll also be able to, to link straight through to the full text. And as before, you can get the, a quick set of scholarly findings, so a summary of that paper, and you can get some citation analysis. But the other useful thing for citation snowballing is that I can download all of these references to a RIS file. And I can then just open that up. So I'm using Zotero today, and I'm going to import that RIS file of references into my Zotero library.
So you can hopefully see there that all of the, the references from that particular paper have been pulled into my library um, and I can, you know, I can do all of the things that I usually do within Zotero. I can change the citation style, export my references. And so this is this is quite a useful um, technique for, for quickly um, snowballing the citations. So the other thing that's going to be useful for me, um, particularly thinking about a literature review and comparing lots of papers that I might have saved as part of my search, is generating a literature matrix. So I've gone back to my main um, music therapy folder and I've got my 20 articles here and I want to generate a literature matrix from those articles. So the way I do that is just to select export and then I'm given actually and I will select all 20 of those articles and then I've got a range of formats that I can export these summary flashcards to so I can export to Word, to RIS, Excel, Markdown and now even PowerPoint but for the matrix I'm going to select Excel and hit export and that is going to capture all of the all of the information, the data from those summary flashcards and present it in an Excel spreadsheet. So for every row, I've got the contents of one of those summary flashcards. So I'm just going to, I formatted this earlier just to make it easier for you to see, but you can see I've got my 20 papers here. Um, I've got all of the, the article metadata, so the title, the author, the year, the DOI, and even the abstract. But where it gets a bit more interesting is that I've also got the key contributions from that paper and the key limitations and some of the main findings and the participants. And these might be aspects of the paper that I really want to compare across 50, 100 articles. And this is really making that, that task easier. So what I also did was just create some Excel slices um, to help me filter this information. And these will really come into their own when you've got lots of articles exported. But I today I'm just going to look at um, the papers that uh, had 60 participants in their studies. So I'm just going to select from the participants all of those that had 60, and then it's just filtered those three papers, and I can head over to the contributions and look at comparing the contributions between those three papers. So that's just a quick way of generating a literature matrix. Um, if you prefer tools such as Notion, then you can import um, your spreadsheet, your Excel spreadsheet into Notion and, and format it. In a, in a different way. So then the other thing that's going to be useful to me if I've determined that, you know, these are the, these are definitely the articles that I want to use as part of my literature review, um, and I want to generate a quick bibliography from them. So again, I'm going to hit the export button and select export documents. And then I'm going to select all of them. And again, you know, you could have up to 100 papers within this one page. And this time I'm going to select export to RIS. And then I'm going to import that RIS file into Zotero. And so you can see that that's pulled in the references of every one of those papers in my library, in my music therapy library. But in addition to that, if I just click on this little arrow here, 
you can see that I've got all of this supplementary information from the flashcard. So I've got notes about the participants, I've got the key highlights and a summary of the paper. So when I come back to this reference, this is just going to give me some more context to the paper that I obviously wouldn't get from just the reference. And I can quickly generate a bibliography from this. So if I just right click and create bibliography and I can choose my citation style and then I'm going to paste that into Word. And you can see there that I've got a fully formatted bibliography that I can use in my thesis or literature review. And what I can also do from that same file that I imported to Zotero is select all of these references and generate a literature report. And so here you can see I've just got this nice neat little literature report with all of the papers from my library. Um, again, it's got the article metadata, the abstract, but then it's also got this supplementary information from the flashcard. So the findings, the summary, um, details on some of the participants, etc. And the last thing I wanted to show you just before I stop for some questions is that if you're a fan of the second, um, the yeah, second brain tools such as Rome and Obsidian, you can also export your summary flashcards to Markdown and you can then import that Markdown file into tools like Rome and Obsidian and you can generate um, a knowledge graph. So if you if you prefer to see the, the material in a more visual way, then that might be something that you want to do. And again, you could do that with, with up to 100 papers at a time. So I am going to stop talking now for a little bit and uh, see if there are any questions. <laughs>